Hey everyone, I'm here with Trevor Winkler, Regional Managing Partner at MNP Calgary. Trevor, how you doing? Very good today, thank you. Perfect, great. Thanks for taking the time, Trevor. Just wanted to start off, just wondering if you had any just advice for small business owners, um, big company executives uh, it, with the current situation we're in. Um, yeah, it's tough to give advice to, to a bunch of leaders that, that are very good at leading, but uh, at the end of the day, we're all in the same type of situation, whether you're a big, uh, big, big entity, big multinational organization, or a small owner-managed or organization. Uh, we're all faced with the same external uh, situation that we are not in any control of, really, other than trying to prevent it to spread. But with respect to policies and getting back into place in the office um, or back to work, um, we got to wait for guidance from from uh, from the government and health officials. Um, from a leader's perspective, uh, we got to stay current. You got to stay up to date, um, and and a result of that, you got to be flexible because these plans and the way that they implement or or advise us to go back to work or permit us to go back to work, they can change. You can expect one thing and it can be totally different. You know, so once you read the media or, or you listen to the news releases, it can be a lot different and you, and you gotta be ready to be flexible. Uh, plans do change and you have to respect that. Um, that's beyond your control. And, and you gotta be ready to make decisions, um, easy and hard ones. And, and you know, you gotta put the business first in a lot of cases, which is unfortunate, but you've gotta run your business as well. Um, other advice for leaders, um, you, you're not in this alone. Delegate, you've got team members that can help. Um, solicit their opinions, uh, get feedback. This is, this is something that nobody's probably ever faced before. I, I can't think of an example very much like this that is worldwide. Um, so make sure you talk to other people in the organization because you know, a leader will say that, uh, you know, you're never always going to make the right decisions. And if you make them unilaterally on your own without any solicited feedback or, or other people's comment, you might make a mistake. Um, and then another thing is uh, you definitely learn that communication is key. You can, you can under communicate, but I don't think you can over communicate. You know what? And, and I'm hearing that pretty consistently across the board with people is, is just stay in touch with people, employees, stakeholders. Um, so would, is there any common mistakes that, I mean, as an entrepreneur of 25 plus years, are there some common mistakes that you generally see that entrepreneurs make in these times? Uh, you know, I don't know if you would say that there's a full list of common mistakes, uh, but there's certainly things that you, you, you want to avoid or pitfalls that could, could fall into it. Um, I talked about it earlier that, uh, I mean, the mistake that you could do is under communicate, not communicate with your team members, not communicate with your staff. Um, that, that's a big hole that you could fall into. Um, and, and you don't want to lose touch with your team members because they're, they're a big part of your team. They're a big part of your business and, and, and big part of you getting back to work. Um, I'd say other advice that you don't want to be is you don't want to be re reactive. You want to try and be proactive. Because um, if you are reactive, sometimes it's just too late. Um, those decisions might have been, uh, needed to be made earlier. Um, if you make a mistake, accept your guilt, accept your fault, learn from it, move on. Um, and then just don't delay in making decisions. If you wait too long, it's too, it, sometimes it's, it's too late and, and the impact of it is too, too much. So if you have a sound business decision, decision that you do have to make, you got to make it. And you got to make it timely, make it quick, and and deal with it. No, for sure. Um, another another question and discussion that I've had with lots of different uh, business leaders is is just around the whole financing side of things. Is is how much is too much, and and um, can you dig yourself, you know, a hole that you can't get out of in these situations? Hey, yes, absolutely. That that is a scary thing because at the end of the day, you leverage and borrow with the intention of being able to pay back. Um, and, and you have to have a purpose for that money, understand the why, why you're borrowing or why you're financing. Uh, but you do need to remember that that needs to be paid back. Uh, I suspect that working with any institution at this time, um, they're going to want personal guarantees. They're going to want um, um, some, some backing to, to whatever they're going to lend. And uh, you, you got to be sure that you're going to be able to pay it back. Uh, it's, 
it's a slippery slope that you could get down uh, because there are a lot of programs out there, whether it's the government programs out there in support, banks have it there. Uh, you know, access to capital might be might be fairly available, but you got to do it for the right reason. Um, you got to you got to make sure that you are going to pay it back, and also watch those high interest rates. Um, they, they could creep up on you, uh, and the ability to to service that debt uh, from a cash flow perspective could be impacted, could be impaired, um, especially now. We don't know what tomorrow's gonna look like from a business perspective. We don't know how long we're gonna get back up to what normal business used to be. Um, so you've gotta be really cautious. I mean, that, that's, that's great advice. I mean, I think that that's one of those things that I think people just, sometimes you hang on to something for too long and you're right, there's, there's so much, there may be financing available, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should jump on it or be paying high interest rates. But yeah. um, that also leads to another one is, is if somebody unfortunately is on the verge of potentially having to shut down their business, go under, um, what are some options? Like, where does somebody turn to? Because I think for, for unexperienced business people or, or, or maybe experienced, doing the midnight move and just not calling people, and, and I don't think that's the best way to approach it, but what would somebody do if they're on the verge of, of you know, shutting things down? Yeah, yeah, I think the midnight move is, uh, is, is only valid if you don't plan on showing up anywhere again at a bank or, or, <laughs> or, or in business again. Ever. Um, yeah, never, never would I advise that. Um, but certainly, yeah, you know, there are lots of options. Uh, it depends how long, how far along you are with respect to that. Um, you know, if, if, if it's early enough and you're seeing the indicators, which, you know, obviously cash flow making in to meet and all that, uh, are early indicators, uh, have a chat with a licensed, uh, insolvency, uh, trustee. Um, they can do cash flow plans. Uh, they can help you with budgeting and targeting before you even get into that final stage of potentially declaring bankruptcy or going into receivership. Um, yeah, have a chat with one of them. Um, if it's early enough, you, you, you might have to pay a bit of a fee, but advisors as well. There's people that can help you run your business. Uh, managing your bottom line. What have you done to, to save expenses? Is there opportunities there that are sitting there that you know sometimes an owner doesn't think of it? And, and sometimes it gets back to those hard decisions that I referred to earlier that you, you have to make to keep your business viable. Maybe they, they just haven't made those. And, and that could keep you alive longer. Well, you know what? And, and again, I've seen a lot of that where people are afraid to make the decision or they don't want to and it's a bit of their baby and they just don't want to let go and they leave, they hang on for so long that it creates a real long-term impact. So uh, that, that's, that's great advice. Yeah, the other thing I think... Uh, you know, a lot of the small businesses would have personal loans to corporations. Uh, you got your shareholder loan. A um, bit of free advice here, consider taking security on those loans. Uh, do a general security agreement, talk to a lawyer. Uh, so you can maybe take priority over other creditors that, if you happen to go down that path. Interesting. Yeah, and even, that's, the, that's the kind of things that, they, you know, a lot of business leaders just don't even, aren't even aware of if you've never been in this situation before. So. Yeah. Um, one last thing I was going to ask you about is just around the government funding and what kind of funds are out there and is it, you know, um, how should a person go about that? I mean, it, they seem to be fairly simple, but I mean, is there opportunities out there or what opportunities are there out there, I guess, for, for businesses? Uh, there, there's a lot of, a lot of help available and, and, and it's a lot of it's good help and needed help uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, when I've talked to clients and I've talked to other colleagues here at MNP, uh, I always remind them what those are for, though. Those are for emergency people. Who needs that? Who needs access to that capital? Um, and at some point, all this has to be paid back um, as well. And that's going to come. I, I don't know what form that's going to come in in the future, uh, but it's going to have to be paid back. It, it's it's government money. It's tax dollars. It's it's royalties. I who knows what it will be in the future, but it's all got to be paid back at some. So the key thing is, is, is look into it and use it if you need it, but be responsible and... Uh... Yeah, I, 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 I don't like anybody that takes advantage of programs, um, especially in times of crisis when there's, when there's uh, you know, people that do need it. Um, and, uh, you know, not that it's a tap that ends. I'm not sure, you know, what they have for a budget uh, or if at some point they got to cut it off. Uh, it's, 
it, it is an emergency response. It's to help those that are, are having difficulties meeting it, making ends meet at this time. Um, and that's, you know, you step back, that's the purpose of the programs. Um, you know, use it if you, if you need it, use it if you can, they're there for you. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a good supplement to help your wages um, over a period of time, um, as well as those that are laid off with respect to helping you make end meet, ends meet as, a, as an individual or as a taxpayer. Yeah, no, absolutely. Trevor, any other uh, last words or words of advice that you'd have for, for business leaders in Alberta? I, I, you know, it's, it's tough to say what type of advice there. Um, you know, I look at it, stay in touch with your team, stay in touch with everybody around you. You're not going through this on your own. Everybody else is going through the same type of thing. Everybody else um, is struggling. You know, you look at the city of Calgary here and think local. If you're going to spend some money, think local. Support the businesses that uh, sponsor our kids' hockey teams or, 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 or anything like that. Um, think local first. Um, it's it's going to go a long way in helping us recover uh, because it's going it, to. We've got a long road ahead of us as a, as a as a city, as a country, and as a world for, for us to recover. And uh, if we can help each other out locally, it's gonna make uh, our community that much better. Sir, thank you very much for taking your time. Trevor, I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, stay healthy, stay well, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to connect in person sometime down the road here. You bet, appreciate the time, Jeff. Great, thanks Trevor.